On this third Sunday of Lent, we are so glad that you have joined us to worship together today. My name is Reverend Jen Collins, and I'm the pastor here at the United Church of Cloverdale. The content for today's interactive service begins on page 10 of your Lenten devotional. If you have not yet received one of these devotional packets, please do contact the church office so we can get you a copy. We invite you to join along when possible today in reading and singing with us throughout today's service. Our lay reader today is Marilyn, and Holly will be leading us out in our singing for today. Again, welcome. We're so glad you are here with us. Today, on this third Sunday of Lent, as we prepare to light a candle of courage in our sanctuary, please join us by preparing to light your candle at home and turning to the packet opening prayer on page 11a. Join me in praying. God of love, help us live today in ways that consecrate the world, defend the vulnerable, protect what is good, and honor creation. Amen. Today's scripture reading is found in John 2, 13 to 22, and can be found on the same page in your Lenten devotional. Today I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making God's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Please join us in singing, Now the Green Blade Rises which can be found on page 11b of your Lenten devotional.
Today's poem by Mary Oliver is found on page 11C and is entitled, Where Does the Temple Begin? Where Does It End? There are things you can't reach, but you can reach out to them and all day long, the wind, the bird flying by, the idea of God, and it can keep you as busy as anything else and happier. The snake slides away, the fish jumps like a little lily out of the water and back in, the goldfinches sing from the unreachable top of the tree. I look morning to night and I am never done with looking. Looking, I mean not just standing around, but standing around as though with your arms open and thinking maybe something will come, some shining coil of wind or a few leaves from any old tree. They are all in this too. And now I will tell you the truth. Everything in the world comes, at least closer and cordially, like the nibbling tinsel-eyed fish, the unlooping snake, like goldfinches, little dolls of gold fluttering around the corner of the sky of God, the blue air. During Jesus' time, the temple was where people came to worship and be in God's presence. And there were certain times of the year that a visit to the temple was required. One such time was Passover, when every male Jew from the age of 12 and up was expected to attend the Passover at Jerusalem. In order to attend, thousands upon thousands of families traveled for days to reach God's dwelling place among the people. At that time, Israel was under the rule of the Romans, and thus the money in use was Roman coin. The catch, however, was that the Jewish law required that during these mandatory trips to Jerusalem, the temple offering was to be half a shekel, which was a Jewish coin. As a result, it became a matter of convenience to have a place where the Roman coin could be exchanged for the Jewish half shekel. Over time, these places to exchange money were moved into the temple itself where the money changers enjoyed a very profitable business, albeit one that resulted in, pro in fraud and oppression of the poor. Additionally, at that time, two doves or pigeons were required to be offered in sacrifice. It was difficult, however, to bring these birds from the distant parts of Judea. So a lucrative business selling the birds sprang up, with the sellers charging exorbitant prices. But as we read in today's scripture reading, more than just birds were being sold in the temple. There were also merchants selling cattle and sheep as well. This is why Jesus was filled with righteous indignation. Because of these sellers who displaced worshipers in order to sell and prey upon the poor and vulnerable. And also because of his passion for maintaining the integrity and purpose of God's house. Jesus was angry because the money changers were making it hard for the ordinary, everyday folk 
to worship God, which was equivalent at that time to their feeling like they could not reach God. Based on their understanding of where they could encounter God, it is no wonder they felt that way. What with the outer court full of birds and animals and sellers hawking their, wear, their wares and people exchanging money, no one was focused on God. So similar to what was referenced in last week's scripture reading, Jesus began upending the things which focused on money and power instead of focusing on God. And in that moment, we find a clear example of Jesus' courage and his intended mission as he stood up for the vulnerable, the powerless, those pushed to the margins, those who were made to feel God was unreachable and that their worth was expendable, and that their lives were exploitable. Even today, sometimes life circumstances make even the idea of God, or at least a God who is personally present with us or available to us, seem beyond our reach, and sometimes even beyond our comprehension. Jesus desires to overturn any messages we might have received throughout our lives that have made us feel that way. Jesus desires to upend any barriers that keep us from sensing God's presence or that have made us feel that we must go the extra mile or pay an exorbitant price in order to be loved or welcomed into Jesus' outstretched arms. Jesus desires to disrupt anything that keeps us from grasping that he has already paid in full any price others might claim is necessary, so that we can then in turn have the confidence that any time we reach for Jesus, there is nothing that can separate us from his love. Furthermore, throughout his ministry, Jesus made clear that the temple was not the only place to meet with him or to sense his presence. Rather, Jesus met with them and continues to meet with us today in the everyday places where we are immersed in life, work, and responsibility, on a hillside, along the seashore, on a dusty road, in the garden, in our homes, at work, at the bedside of the sick, or in the midst of grieving for a loved one who has died. And what's more, Jesus made it clear that he does not exclude anyone and he welcomes all who reach out, including those considered unclean and outcasts of society, whether due to illness, gender, age, being poor, widowed, ethnic background, or otherwise. Indeed, everywhere he went, Jesus was challenging and upending tradition and the status quo in order to demonstrate God's love for all humanity as Jesus ushered in the light of spring after a long, dark winter. What Jesus purchased once and for all on Calvary, he offers to us with outstretched arms inviting us to reach out to him in return, opening our arms and setting down all that we carry at Jesus' feet as we accept his offer to help us make it through the moment, through the day, and through whatever life demands of us. Jesus promises 
that everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And for everyone who reaches out, he will be available and within reach. All which in turn will enhance our ability to see and experience the blessings and joys that God has filled this world with, and all of which will come closer every time we look up and around us with expectation, with our arms open and thinking, what delight or blessing does God have in store for me today? For what has seemed unreachable on our own is within our grasp because of Jesus and his outstretched arms on Calvary. I invite you to join me in reading our closing prayer, which you can find on page 10. God of justice, help us to protect the vulnerable with wisdom and audacity. Show us your true temple. Amen. We thank you for joining us and being a part of our worship service today as we continue to journey through this Lenten season together. As our service draws to a close, we invite you to consider which of the suggested practices on page 11 of your devotional might be meaningful for you throughout the upcoming week. Know that we are grateful for all the ways that you have provided support as it has been necessary for us to worship remotely. If we can be of support or help for you, whether that's just to talk or to pray or help you to navigate our website or Facebook or YouTube channel, please do call the church office and we can set up a time to help you. May God bless you and yours throughout this upcoming week.